Welcome to the book club on how to win friends and influence people by Dale Carnegie. Thank you for giving yourself the gift of learning today. Most, if not all of this book is simply courteous behavior that has become less common with each generation. I value the simple reminders of admirable actions and I hope you will too. My five favorite big ideas from the book are negative opinions are volatile, Make it fun, Inception, because it's my favorite movie. What you appreciate, appreciates, and seek first to understand. Because after all, we have two ears and one mouth so we can listen more and talk less. Do you want to be criticized less? Would hearing less complaints be helpful? Absolutely. In order to optimize, we need solutions after all. Others won't criticize themselves, so why should we? Criticisms are like homing pigeons, and the other person will be too focused on justifying themselves to improve. We cannot grow together by making others go on the defensive. Let's take a look at several quotes, maybe pause and reflect afterwards too. When did someone in your life last use these strategies for a win-win? 1. Men must be taught as if you taught them not, and things unknown proposed as things forgot. Two. You cannot teach a man anything. You can only help him to find it within himself. 3. Be wiser than other people if you can, but do not tell them so. 4. One thing only I know, and that is that I know nothing. There is magic, positive magic, in such phrases as, I may be wrong, I frequently am, let's examine the facts. We like to continue to believe what we have been accustomed to accept as true, and the resentment aroused when doubt is cast upon any of our assumptions leads us to seek every manner of excuse for clinging to it. The result is that most of our so-called reasoning consists in finding arguments for going on believing as we already do. Very rarely do we permit ourselves to understand precisely what the meaning of the statement is to the other person. There comes a time in our lives when our preconceived notions contradict reality. In these moments, we'll have to choose between stepping forward into growth or back into safety. If approached correctly, the mentor enables understanding instead of making a confrontation over cognitive dissonance. Do you remember the last time you made a life-changing revelation or even just had an aha moment? Now, think how that would have gone if someone had condescendingly asserted that what you've been doing all this time is obviously wrong. Would you have accepted their feedback as truth? Probably not. So, let's empower others instead of tearing them down. There are no perfect human beings. You and I won't be the first. I have recently reflected on my own performance evaluations. One from about a year ago stands out because I had been preparing a solution to issues I had been observing for over a month. I was suddenly brought in and berated by the very same people causing the problems. The abrupt and absurd nature of the encounter caused me to abandon my careful planning and knowledge of this book. Because of how I expressed it, nothing ever changed. You have the opportunity to be the bigger person because of your knowledge of this book. I know I want to help 51% of the world's population flourish by the year 2051, and this is just one way to contribute towards that goal. On tournament days, I do everything I can to serve the hundreds of martial artists and their families to the best of my abilities. Even with two to four other black belts, mistakes can happen in the fast-paced environment. In my ring, it's my responsibility, and I'm the first to apologize when issues arise. We handle the situation patiently and professionally to reach the optimal outcome. Consider how you might feel if someone said, thank you for your patience, or thank you for understanding, instead of, sorry. If your child or student places second at ATA district or world championships, there is a lot to be proud of. They still won, and they have the opportunity to learn. When you're talking to them about the match or their performance, do you think using but 
or and to support them would be more encouraging. You were really fast out there, but you should have used a stopping psychic instead of trying to punch him at the same time. Or, we're really proud of your dedication and we know you're not going to let this stop you from achieving your goals. Matthew McConaughey recently had over 2 million attendees for a special live event he organized with Dean Graziosi and Tony Robbins. The Mastermind Road Trip Program, based off his number one bestseller, Green Lights, includes a story where Matthew gets a lot off his chest. Brother Christian, who had been listening silently for hours, at the end leaned in and whispered, Me too. Would that experience have been as transformative if the monk's intention was fault-finding? A donkey insisted to a tiger that the grass was blue. Ultimately, the tiger was punished for bothering a lion over such a trivial issue. What the tiger didn't understand is that it didn't matter what the donkey thought, nor was he going to be convinced otherwise. Remember the positive effects of letting others save face. The second big idea is to make it fun. Can you remember the last time you had an argument? I can't. In your honest opinion, how much better would it have been had you not become argumentative? On the other hand, have you chosen to agree with someone and watch them be speechless? You can't win an argument, not when you consider the long-term consequences. The level of ownership afforded to those you ask spurs their future initiative and responsibility. Despite awareness of school rules, some teachers will still make an activity out of setting classroom ones. Do you think their students will be more engaged? By managing expectations and allowing good behavior to be their idea, students create a more productive learning environment for themselves. Tell your child or your spouse or your employee that he or she is stupid or dumb at a certain thing, has no gift for it, and is doing it all wrong, and you have destroyed almost every incentive to try to improve. But use the opposite technique. Be liberal with your encouragement. Make the thing seem easy to do. Let the other person know you have faith in their ability to do it, and that they have an undeveloped flair for it, and he will practice until the dawn comes in in order to excel. Frederick Erzberg found that if the work was exciting and interesting, the worker looked forward to doing it and was motivated to do a good job. That is what every successful person loves, the game. The chance for self-expression. The chance to prove his worth, to excel, to win. The desire for a feeling of importance. This is the day of dramatization. Merely stating a truth isn't enough. The truth has to be made vivid, interesting, dramatic. You have to use showmanship. For example, in a commercial to sell a cash register, you might see them throwing pennies on the ground or convincing children to collect their toys by playing train. Moving on. One, be sincere. Two, do not promise anything you cannot deliver. Forget about the benefits to yourself and concentrate on the benefits to the other person. Know exactly what it is you want the other person to do. Three, be empathetic. Ask yourself what it is the other person really wants. Four, consider the benefits that person will receive from doing what you suggest. Five, match those benefits to the other person's wants. And six, when you make your request, put it in a form that will convey to the other person the idea that he personally will benefit. Our third big idea is inception. As Henry Ford admonishes, let's get the other person's point of view and see things from his or her angle as well as from our own. Roosevelt knew that the royal word to a person's heart is to talk about the things he or she treasures most. He talked about the things he knew would interest you and please you. He made himself agreeable. So, do you think Dale Carnegie knew what he was talking about? Can you think of at least one person who would benefit from practicing this? Begin 
by emphasizing the things on which you agree. Keep emphasizing that you are both striving for the same end and that your only difference is one of method and not of purpose. Isn't it wiser to make suggestions and let the other person think out the conclusion? This is what Eugene Wesson did. I urged him to give me his ideas. This made him feel that he was creating the designs. And he was. I didn't have to sell him. He bought. Radiate a little happiness and pass on a bit of honest appreciation without trying to get something out of the other person in return. I wanted something priceless. The feeling that I had done something for him without his being able to do anything whatever in return for me. Always make the other person feel important. Talk to people about themselves. The only sound basis on which to proceed is to assume that they're sincere, honest, truthful, and willing and anxious to pay the charges once convinced they are correct. People are honest and want to discharge their obligations. Assume a virtue if you have it not. And it might be well to assume and state openly that other people have the virtue you want them to develop. Give them a fine reputation to live up to, and they will make prodigious efforts rather than see you disillusioned. Moving on to our fourth big idea, what you appreciate, appreciates. If you come at me and say, let us sit down and take counsel together, and if we differ from each other, understand why it is that we differ, just what the points at issue are, we will presently find that we are not so far apart after all, that the points on which we differ are few, and the points on which we agree are many and that if we only have the patience and the candor and the desire to get together, we will get together. Friendliness begets friendliness. A smile says, I like you. You make me happy. I am glad to see you. A smile can help someone realize there is joy in the world. To get anybody to do anything, make them want to. Dr. Dewey says the deepest urge in human nature is the desire to be important. One of the most neglected virtues of our daily existence is appreciation. It is a legal tender that all souls enjoy. Why, I wonder, don't we use the same common sense when trying to change people that we use when trying to change dogs? Why don't we use meat instead of a whip? Why don't we use praise instead of condemnation? Let us praise even the slightest improvement that inspires the other person to keep on improving because he had singled out a specific accomplishment rather than just making general flattering remarks his praise became much more meaningful when the praise is specific it comes across as sincere our final big idea seek first to understand remember that other people may be totally wrong but they don't think so. Try to understand them. There is a reason why the other man thinks and acts as he does. Ferret out that reason, and you have the key to his actions, perhaps to his personality. You will save yourself time and irritation, for by becoming interested in the cause, we are less likely to dislike the effect. When I've had the opportunity to host black belt birthday parties, Remembering 20 or more names is literally a party trick. But guess how much easier it is to show how our programs develop discipline when within five minutes of meeting a child, and in this case all his friends, they can already answer up and stand like a black belt. If I hadn't taken the time to remember their names first, I'd be doing everyone a disservice. If you believe you are great at remembering people's names, you will be and vice versa. If we want to make friends, let's put ourselves out to do things for other people, things that require time, energy, unselfishness, and thoughtfulness. When writing to authors, we enclose the list of questions for them to answer about themselves and their methods of work. They like that. Let the other people talk themselves out. Even our friends would much rather talk to us about their achievements then listen to us boast about ours. If you aspire to be a good conversationalist, be an attentive listener. 
To be interesting, be interested. Ask questions that other persons will enjoy answering. Encourage them to talk about themselves and their accomplishments. So, because I had apologized and sympathized with her point of view, she began apologizing and sympathizing with my point of view. I had the satisfaction of controlling my temper, the satisfaction of returning kindness for an insult. I got infinitely more real fun out of making her like me than I would ever have gotten out of telling her to take a jump. This is a strategy that I should have used a year ago, too. Sympathy, the human species universally craves. The child eagerly displays his injury. For the same purpose, adults show their bruises, relate their accidents or illnesses, especially the details of surgical operations. Self-pity for misfortunes, real or imaginary, is in some measure practically a universal practice. Can you recall the five big ideas from the book? Let's recap. Negative opinions are volatile. Make it fun. Inception. What you appreciate, appreciates. And seek first to understand. If you can listen, keep harsh words to yourself, and inspire action in others, you will surely win friends and influence people. Thanks for joining me. Which idea stood out the most for you that you're eager to go out and practice? I look forward to sharing more soon. Have another awesome day.